So in cancer immunotherapy, resistance to immunotherapy has been a big issue. Uh, and one of the primary mechanisms that people have been interested in pursuing is trying to drive new immune responses. And sting as a therapeutic target has been um, sort of one of the highest priorities in the field over the last few years. Now that being said, the early data from clinical trials really hasn't suggested the kind of benefit that we all had assumed based on the preliminary data from mouse modeling, et cetera. So in my talk on a next generation sting agonist approach, is I reviewed what we think have been some of the limitations, like the need to inject the medicine directly into the tumor and then trying to look for you know, what we've out of field, distant immunological effects. And is that a feasible approach? Is that not? Uh, other issues that we identified are do we really truly on a mechanistic level understand which immune cells we actually need to turn on to cause the anti-cancer effect? Uh, and then finally, um, you know, which patients are most likely to benefit? And so we've, we've sort of thought that this was a broadly active immunological mechanism, but it, it certainly could be the case, and there's growing data to the effect to suggest that maybe the patient's host baseline immunity, just their normal genetics, may actually impact on which therapies could be impactful. And so in reviewing all of this, it sort of outlines you know, where we need to go as a field in this area, and there are many, many sting agonist clinical trials ongoing now that range from IV administration, intratumoral, subcutaneous, all different versions. And I think we'll learn from here kind of the answer to some of these questions that we proposed. But um, I think this is a therapeutic target that makes all kinds of sense. And I think we just have to learn how to do it better to really turn it into a real treatment for patients.